Yeah, so last week on the Min Max Show podcast, uh, we ran through some underappreciated games from this year to try and get ready for Min Max's Game of the Year debate to be like, hey, just a reminder. Um, let's see. Um, the Space for the Unbound came out earlier this year in a freaking rules. Don't forget about that. Um, but there are there's too many hidden gems for us to possibly cover as a group. And so the point of having a community like MinMax, which is paying attention to games all year, is that they can uh, come together and hive mind uh, an incredible list of hidden gems. And so we've assembled that uh, in the MinMax Discord. People shared their suggestions. Some people on Twitter shared their suggestions for some hidden gems this year. And I was blown away. It's like, it's the perfect sweet spot of, I listen to more video game podcasts than God. Um, and there's still so much stuff that I have never heard of. And then when I Google and look that up and find about this, this game on Steam and see that it has an overwhelmingly positive review, like, so that is my sweet spot. And so a lot of these are fitting that exact category. So thanks to everybody for, who suggested some great under the radar stuff. Um, okay, Haley McLean, are you ready for some of these? Heck yeah. Okay, this is from... These butts, they suggested, I'm sorry for the name. They Love suggested it. a game called Pseudo Regalia. Pseudo Regalia. It's available on Steam. And These Butts says it's an indie N64 slash PS1 style Ooh. 3D platformer with Metroidvania progression. It's genuinely some of the best feeling platforming this side of Nintendo. I love that effect where when they dash, it leaves the animation frames behind. That's yeah. Cool. Isn't that awesome? And like, I know I'm such a sucker for PlayStation 1 nostalgia, but I just, you say Metroidvania these days, indie Metroidvania, it's like, I know exactly what that looks like in my head. But having one that's 3D like this in this throwback style, I, I was so yeah. over the moon about it. And it's overwhelmingly positive on Steam. So Suda Regalia is the name of that one. There's a... Uh, there's all these games are going to be in the description, by the way, if you want an exact uh, spelling for all this fun stuff. So uh, check it out. Yeah, the developer's name is Ritzler for that one. Uh, also, we have uh, Poolback in the community suggested a game that was on my radar. I wanted to check it out, but I didn't get around to it. Uh, this is called Dot Age. Dot Age. Dotage. Dot Age. I guess is the cleaner way to put it. Uh, the developer <laughs> is uh, Michelle Puravano. Um, and the official description for dotage dot age is says it's a roguelite turn based city builder with some rim world elements. The elder of your village is telling you the story on how they beat the apocalypse. However, his memory isn't great. And as you play games, he remembers more and more things. <laughs> oh, cool. Is this, a, is this on mobile? Do you know? No, it's Steam. Steam. I was kind of hoping it was. I guess I could play on my Steam Deck. It looks like a very good Haley Bed game. Ooh, yeah, exactly. Yeah, turn-based survival roguelite village builder is the way they pitch. Dot age, but I'm very curious about it. Yeah, it came out earlier this year, and people love it on Steam. And I feel bad that we haven't gotten around to it, but hopefully we it looks can so cute. find a new audience for it. Um, this one, I am just fascinated by. This was suggested by Ampex in the MinMax community. It is a game called Worldless. Worldless. Um, Ooh, what it's the from, heck? Yeah, it's from No Name Studios. It looks freaking cool. Where the main character, imagine like, you know how Rayman has like his floating arms? Uh, imagine that, but that's the entire character. It's just like floating. <laughs> you got rid of Rayman. Yeah, if you got rid of the core body of Rayman, it's just floating arms and legs and a glowing head. But uh, they describe it as it's worldless is a stylized 2D platformer with a unique active turn-based combat system. That's the part I can't wrap my mind around. Oh, it's turn-based. Yeah, for the combat and a mind-bending interpretive narrative. Players embark on a journey of self-growth and understanding, pushing the limits of their nature in a newly born and abstract universe. But looks freaking sweet. Reviews are great on Steam. And unless, you know, these games are getting docked because they have a woman protagonist or something like those steam reviews i have so much faith in <laughs> like if there's not uh you know some uh, lousy people about uh dragging it down like these games that are small that have overwhelmingly positive steam reviews i am all in on so worldless is the name of that one thank you to ampex for we get, that like out. the possibility that like that ethereal concept of a human is probably a woman <laughs> downvote get her <laughs> bad review uh, get her this one is fascinating to me this is elevator action returns S tribute. Uh, Michael Barry in the community suggested this one. This is 
very up my alley. Uh, Michael Berry says, this arcade slash Sega Saturn game is a 2D side-scrolling die-hard game that's a lot of fun with a friend. It is underloved and underplayed, but now that it's on modern consoles, please give it a go. So it's an old <laughs> Sega Saturn arcade game that is so heavily inspired by Die Hard. Haley McLean, as somebody who has a relative that's named John McLean, I think you need to check out Elevator Action Returns S Tribute. I'll play with my grandpa. Oh, there we go. Uh, You'll love it. Perfect. The developer is a city connection uh, for this old game that came back, but it looks freaking cool. Uh, there's another game that came out that I never heard of and also captured my imagination immediately called Void Stranger. Um, this is submitted from Jumpo in the MinMax community. Uh, they say it can be summed up as a Sako... Sokoban slash box pushing style puzzle game, but it's one of those games where explaining why it's so great would need me to spoil it. So I'll just say that it has a ton of secrets hiding inside of it. This is Void Stranger, it's an overall puzzle mystery game. It looks Game Boy ish, but if yeah. Jumpo is saying that it's filled with a ton of weird secrets and the reviews are so hot uh, on Steam, you know that something weird is happening here with Void Stranger. But it seems quite cool. Yeah, like uh, Mike, Michael just said in the chat, Link's Awakening vibes, yeah. Yeah, for sure, for sure. Uh, this one, I thought on the MinMax show we covered every farming game uh, that released this year, but somehow we missed Sunhaven. Uh, let's see. Hey Tots in the MinMax community says, okay, yeah, I know it's one of those, but it's a good one of those when it comes to pixel farming games. <laughs> Small town farm life, but with a ton of quality of life options. Uh, others in the genre lack, like adjusting the length of day to your tastes overall. Ooh, so yeah, it's developed like by Pixel Sprout Studios for Sunhaven. Another one that has great reviews that came out the this year that people just forgot about. Uh, this one is cute. Red a lion? Apparently. Sick. Uh, this one is called Station to Station. Uh, were 320 from the Midmax community suggested it. Oh, I remember seeing a trailer for this and one of the, uh, was it? The cozy stream. Really? Whatever. God, I forgot about it. Um, yeah. But uh, Wurr says it's a voxel-based puzzle game where you're placing train stations and the tracks that connect them. I enjoy that the levels never get overly complicated, and then when you connect a line, life comes back to the world shown through color returning oh, to it. I love that. It does look really good. This and then it's like just tra like train Terranil. Yeah, yeah. Or a little bit like um, you know, if you're in the mood for trains and overlook games this year like media molecule released trend which is a game within dreams but they released it this year and it's also freaking cool so if you like trains check that out too but this is called station to station there i remember uh, when we talked about trend on the podcast i was like what a great name like what great creative names and then someone in the comments was like that's just train in spanish <laughs> I was like, <laughs> No one does it like the spanish they nailed it uh this one was surprising to me i hadn't heard of this this is called Unidentified Falling Objects, and it seems very up my alley. I definitely am checking this out. Um, Marty from the Mimnex community suggested it. They say it's a charming falling blocks puzzler where you play as an adorable little astronaut with a gun. As you play through the levels, you're able to upgrade slash change your weapon and your movement abilities. It's easily one of my favorite games of 2023, says Marty. Oh, wow. I, I like it because it reminds me of... There's an old game called Egg Mania, where it's kind of like a Tetris clone, but you're like an egg guy running around and actually managing things on the board. And I really love that game on Game Boy Advance back in the day. Um, but Unidentified Falling Objects uh, is developed by Andrew Morish. And this was surprising. Gearbox published this thing. Oh, wow, really? And, and still, I didn't hear about it. And it has not that many reviews on Steam, even though they are super positive. So Unidentified Falling Objects is the name of that one. Uh, this one, I guess, yeah, like that's so smart to have a platformer match em game like that, yep. of course, because yep. you change the platforming, the better you play. There it is. Uh, this one we technically did highlight accidentally in Cream of the Steam, our show where we just show the weirdest games released on Steam in the last month. We're trying to surface cool stuff, but this one is called uh, Robo Dunk, and Tom Bryan in the community uh, <laughs> loves it. Uh, Robo Dunk, uh, let's see. Oh, yeah, this is the official description on Steam. Dunk from space in the first basketball roguelite. Smash and blast in the replayable single player and co-op campaign. Buy robots, upgrade their stats, and unlock tons of skills. Choose your path among different options, traps, and rewards. Up to four players versus where every match is different. And Jolly Punch Games developed it. But, yeah, Robodunk, it has a great, like, tilt shift 
tilt shift art style to it um but it's sweet we played it for a little bit in cream of the steam it was one of those that we went into like oh robo dunk ha 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 and we're like wait no this actually seems quite good uh so shout out to robo dunk there uh we have another one another pixel game uh this is available on consoles as well this one's called gravity circuit and grum grumpy gnome from the min max community suggested it as one of their favorites uh, and the official description says gravity circuit is a flashy action-packed 2d platformer in the spirit of console classics follow kai a lone operative war hero who harnesses the mysterious power of the gravity circuit on an adventure in a futuristic world inhabited by sentient robots it's developed by domesticated ant games but yeah, if you like old Mega Man, uh, it seems a little bit more Mega Man X-y. Based on that slide mm-hmm. there, you can check out Gravity Circuit. Shout out to Grumpy Gnome for suggesting it. Uh, then, Kanipa suggested this one. I missed this completely. Kanipa from the Moon Max community suggested a game called Fate slash Samurai Remnant. Fate oh. slash Samurai Remnant. They say it's the most mechanically rich Omega Force action game to date with a plot filled with twists, turns, and immediately lovable characters. So everyone, I, I don't know if it's technically a Muso game, but it's from that team. But yeah, I completely okay. missed this one. Yeah, Fate slash Samurai Remnant uh, for Very everything. Very stylized. Happening. Very stylized. Uh, let's see. World of Horror is, is a... I'm getting shot with a backlog gun. <laughs> I know, sorry. Horror. You thought you were catching up, Haley. You're so far off. Um, World of Horror... Uh, let's see. Oh, this person didn't... Oh, not weirder. Not weirder in the Max community suggested it. They say, uh, this Junji Ito-inspired horror game is filled to the brim with gorgeous pixel Whoa. art and has a unique retro user interface. And then not weirder says, also, shout out to Pseudo Regalia as being awesome as well. Uh, but World of Horror, the developer is Pan's Taz here, if you want to check that out. It does Whoa, that look looks so cool. interesting. Like the menu system and stuff. I'm yeah. so intrigued by the way that looks. There's a lot going on there. It seems like a tough one to bring to consoles based on that UI. So check it out on Steam, everybody. World of Horror. There it is. Um, this is one. Um, who was this? Interrata in the Minimax community suggested a game called Wild Frost, which I missed, which is a deck building roguelite with fantastic art, challenging combat, and a nice twist on the final boss, is what uh, Interrata suggested for Wild Frost, which is published by Chuckle- Chucklefish, actually. Uh, the developer oh, is cool. Deadpan Studios here. But speaking of which, God, I, did I miss this? There was another game that was a card based roguelite that looked Cobalt Core. Have you seen Cobalt Core? Uh, no, I don't think so. Let's see. A couple of people recommended this, and it's like, God, this does look sweet. And it's another one that um, is sitting at overwhelmingly positive for the few people who did play it on Steam. But let me see the official description. It's a sci-fi roguelite deck builder with a deep new single-player, no, single-access spin on tactics games. Dodge missiles, oh, wow. line up your cannons, blast them out of the sky, then get to the bottom of these time loops before it's too late. But it's developed by a Rocket Rat Games. A couple people were screaming about like, Cobalt Core! And I see this and it's like, this seems like a Jeffum game if I've ever seen it. So I'm trying to get code so that we can get Jeffum or somebody to play Cobalt Core because a little bit of um, FTL vibes, but then card-based system as well. It seems quite cool there for Cobalt Core. It's um, fast paced. Like you just press, like click, press the card, shoot it off, keep going. Yeah. Quick stuff. I like that. I want to see how it all works. Uh, this is one suggested by uh, Noble on YouTube. They recommended a game called The Pale Beyond, um, which is like a survival sim, but seems more survival sim, visual novel esque interface. Um, but uh, the official okay. description for Pale Beyond says, you didn't ask to lead this expedition, but here you are, stuck in the ice. Captain missing, miles from civilization, someone has to take charge. Manage your meager resources, balance safety and morale, make the hard calls, and head in the only direction you can, through the Pale Beyond. Uh, seems a little bit like that old, uh, what was it, the 11-bit, Studios game. Why am I blanking on their survival sim? But chat, you can help me out. Uh, but the pale beyond okay. there. That's sweet. Uh, developer is Bellular Studios uh, from that oh. thing. Uh, then uh, a game that a lot of people have been screaming about, um, but maybe not enough. Uh, Slay the Princess. It's a horror visual novel. Jacob recommended this to me. Did he? Is he playing it? Yeah. 
Yeah, okay, he good, said good. I'd really like it. Oh, sweet. Yeah, it's a visual novel. Are you a visual novel type of person, or why do you think he connected you with this? Probably like Goodbye Volcano High, maybe. Like, he knows I like that a lot, and that's kind of visual novel story-based, and then I guess I'm... Alan Wake horror is horror, <laughs> maybe? <laughs> Alan Wake horror is horror. I guess I just... I like things with good narrative, like, systems and stuff, so this looks like it might have that. Yeah. Uh, oh, Frostpunk was the game I was thinking of a while ago for the survival sim. Uh, yeah, so uh, Slay the Princess... I love it because the Steam description, all it says is, you're here to slay the princess. Don't believe her lies. Uh, so weird psychological mm-hmm. horror based on that. But JD Fellow gave it a big recommendation. The developer is uh, Black Tabby Games, if you're interested in Slay the Princess. Um, this game seems cute. There's a game called Tiny Thor. Tiny Thor, Hashi Kong, and the MinMax community suggested it. Um, the official description on Steam says, Jump into this challenging retro platformer. Play as Thor. Use his mighty hammer and unique items to explore the northern realms. Beware of mythical creatures blocking your path to become a god. Uh, also, it looks like if you're a fan of Mega Man X old retro platformers, you should check out Tiny Thor because the reviews are also great on Steam. So shout out to the developer Asylum Square. Uh, then... Such cool pixel art. I know. Everyone's on top of it. They're doing a great job. Um... Oh, there's some other ones um, <laughs> that I just checked out and really like that I'm going to obnoxiously throw in here as well. Um, there's a game that on Second Wind's debut podcast, uh, Steph Sterling recommended. Um, if you're a fan of Vampire Survivors, <laughs> blanked on the name of that game for a second, um, you should check out a game called Bone Razor Minion. Bone Razor Minions, I'm sorry, plural. Um, it's available on Steam for $4.00. It's, um, I like the art in this more than I like, uh, vampire survivors. Um, but yeah, me too. The, the big hook with bone razor minions is you are not directly attacking the enemies and trying to survive in these little arenas, but you have a bunch of minions that you're building up and you're collecting more of them, modifying Mm -hmm. them. And so you're just building a small little army and you can set traps in the environment and whatnot. Uh, but it's, it's very well done. If you like vampire survivors, you should absolutely check it out. Uh, Bone Razor Minions is the name of it. Um, developer is Case on that one. Um, and then on that front, there's another game that's adjacent to um, Vampire Survivors that just came out. It's called Typecast. A couple of people were recommending what? it as well in the Midnight community. So it's more bullet hell than it is Vampire Survivors. But Typecast is basically bullet hell typing of the dead available on steam i love that it's That's so funny excellent and so it focuses on like the upper left of the keyboard to start out with at least where it's like okay q w e you got to shoot the different letters that are coming in towards you but then there's gonna be other enemies that are gonna be asd um and different twists on the formula there so uh it's also it's available for five dollars on steam and the official description is typecast is a bullet hell where you type to shoot, get swarmed by enemies, manage the chaos, and climb the leaderboards in this unique arcade experience. <laughs> the developer is a gutter arcade and official electric. Um, but it's it's a surprisingly cool game called Typecast. So cool. If you like that frenzy. Ray Laws has said this is training for Trivia Tower. <laughs> <laughs> it kind of is. Sadly, it kind of is. Um, there's also a game that uh, was recommended here um, by. Ooh, they didn't submit their name in the MinMax community, but it's called, oh, it's so hard to say this name, Mosalina. Mosalina. Mm-hmm. It's a low-stakes immersive sim. This is somebody in the community who wrote it. Um, a low-stakes immersive sim that is so random, it makes me feel like a genius when I'm able to figure something out, and I don't feel dumb when I absolutely cannot figure out what to do. So, bizarre 2D immersive sim is the vibe for Mosalina. I actually played this when it came out. And I could not comprehend uh-huh. what was going on. Um, but more power to you. Uh, the developer is Stuffed Wombat, and the reviews are, are great for uh, Mosalina there. Uh, also, we have the show Cream of the Steam, where we show off random games released on Steam. We played this game, or I guess more appropriately, we tried to play this game on Cream of the Steam. And it does seem like a very good idea. Um, and it's cheap, and no one's playing it or reviewing it on Steam. But there's a game called Secret Shuffle. That's available on Steam for 13 bucks. So, Haley, the way this works, apparently four to 60 players is what the trailer says. Yeah, you you download a free app on your phone, like Jackbox style, and then everybody puts in their headphones, and it's all just about, like, dancing, and it's, I guess, a social deduction oh, game in some ways. one person's faking? Yes. 
So if one person does not have the music and they're just trying to dance along to what everybody else is doing, but then there's also different games in there too. Like uh, the one we played is like, okay, it splits the room in half. So half the people are listening to one song and dancing to it. Half the room is listening to another song and dancing to it. And you need to like find the people that are dancing to the same song as you are, but you can, oh. you're not hearing anything because everyone's wearing their headphones. So everyone's like shimming around the room to try and find who's grooving in the right way. Uh, but the official description here from developer Adrian Dejong says social deduction games meets dance parties. Secret Shuffle is a party game for four or more players with phones and headphones. Guess which player doesn't hear any music, but instead pretends to or find the others dancing to the same music. It seems like a really stupid, fun time. Uh, if you like Jackbox-style stuff and dancing, uh, Secret Shuffle is, is maybe the, the game for you. And again, like, two reviews on Steam. Like, no one is playing Secret Shuffle. It's too much of a secret. Um, should we try and play it during our Give to the Max stream? Yeah, we should. Let's try that. That looks okay. fun. I think it is fun. Um, let's see. There's a bunch of other games that people in the Midmax community recommended. So shout out to everybody uh, for recommending these great stuff, uh, these great games. E&T Clark recommended 30XX, which is that Mega Man style platformer, which I think just went 1.0 this year. But uh, E&T Clark absolutely loves that. Uh, Philly Eats Day gave a shout out to Moving Out 2, saying it's more moving out, but they remember to include online co-op this time and it rules. So Moving Out 2, shout out. Uh, Flynn C recommends The Silent Swan, which is a walking simulator where all the monolithic structures and the spaces between them are modeled at a scale comparable to real life. Disregards traditional level design for large periods of nothing apart from ambient noise and a sweeping soundtrack. J Jacob Geller, are you listening? Uh, it won't work for everyone, but we. But it was as immersive as putting on a VR headset for the first time. Uh, Silent Swan uh, is the name of that game. Uh, Steve Lucian recommended Mr. Run and Jump, which is the Atari published uh, fast Face platformer. Like if you like uh, Super Meat Boy, you can check that out. Shindig in the community recommended Everspace 2, which is a game that I missed, but single player space combat. It seems surprisingly great. The reviews are wonderful. Keenardo recommended Amnesia the Bunker. We're saying everybody was overlooking that game, but it's not often a horror game comes out that manages to instill such dread by the very nature of how it's designed. Check out Amnesia the Bunker, says Keenardo. Um, Wabak recommended Age of or not Age of Empires, Age of Wonders 4, the 4X game. Le Landino recommended Unguard which is the swashbuckling game. We didn't talk about it on the Midmax show, but it did look great. Um, this one, a lot of people are hot on. I don't know how many people at Midmax have played it yet, but Mogs gives a shout out to Chance of Sonar, the puzzle game about deciphering oh, and connecting yeah. through language. I want to play that. It seems great. Uh, Steven Miller recommended uh, Planet of Lana, uh, which is great. Uh, Ken Mee recommended Little Goody Two Shoes. It's a horror narrative a adventure game published by Square Enix. It's set in a German village with a beautiful retro anime art style for Liddy Goody, Little Goody Two Shoes, but people love it. Dark, twisted fairy tale stuff. Uh, and there's fun mini games to make you earn your keep in the village. Um, let's see. Carpe Diaz recommended Pokemon TCG Live. There's a new way you can play the Pokemon trading card game, apparently, and it's sweet. Uh, let's see. Levi recommended EA Sports WRC, the best racing game to come out this year. I didn't play it. I apologize. Uh, Dragon Hunter recommended Convergence, a League of Legends story, which is apparently a great Metroidvania. I think a lot of those League of Legends story games are like good, but just no one's really talking about them, at least in our circle. So if you want a Metroidvania yeah. game, check out that League of Legends Convergence. These butts give a shout out to the System Shock remake. Uh, Procyon number six, uh, gave a shout out to Remnant 2, which plenty of people are playing, but certainly could use some more love from our community. Um, Darkfish Days, gave a shout out to Tren in Dreams, of course. A lot of people were screaming about Oxen Free 2, Lost Signals, not enough people were playing. Um, mm. Sean R. recommended the Citizen Sleeper DLC, saying the DLC uh, that finished, it, the DLC finished in 2023 and it's just as good as the base game, so don't sleep on the Citizen Sleeper DLC. Uh, she Harry recommended Ghost Runner 2. Yep. Uh, Kellogg's recommended Talos Principle. Beats in Your Head recommended Aliens Dark Descent. People are sleeping on that. Tactics game that came out this year. Uh, a lot of people screaming about Shadow Gambit, The Cursed Crew, which we've raved about on the Min Max Show podcast, but don't forget about that. I will note several people recommending Shadow Gambit, The Cursed Crew did mess up the title of it, so it's not a good sign. Um, <laughs> hey Tots recommended Shadows of Doubt, the sandbox detective game. It's a gold tier immersive sim, completely open and with near limitless options of how to go about things. Community support adds great longevity to Shadows of Doubt. Bob Beal in the community recommended Gumbrella. Don't forget about that. Uh, Aiden recommended Friends vs. Friends, which Leo is really hot on. It's a 1v1 or a 2v2 deck building first person shooter that provides really fun short matches that vary from round to round and provide a lot of strategic depth. 
Um, and tis and Tin Disguise recommended Stray Gods, of course, the musical, which is I, I played the game, I liked it. Um, Snoozer recommended Season Letter to the Future. Don't forget about that one that came out earlier this year. I missed that one this year. I wanted yeah. to play that. Jacob Geller seems to be on top of it. Um, he played it and really liked it. And then a ton of people were screaming about Octopath Traveler 2. But there's uh, <laughs> truly too many games to recommend. Uh, but thank you to everybody in the MinMax community for helping to surface uh, some of these hidden gems from this year, because uh, we as an outlet can only do so much. But shout out to the, the hive mind out there. Haley, uh, what jumped out to you the most if you had to really be put on the spot and call one out? That train one looks very relaxing and nice. I good. like that mope that um it's not mobile but i want it to be mobile like town building dotted dot like, age yeah yeah dot whatever <laughs> yep yep um th that really jumped out to me and i think i want to try slay the princess yeah because yeah. Jacob recommended it and it does seem cool like i like the premise of like she's lying to you just kill her like i like when games do that and you're like oh should i do it or not like <laughs> that's just telltale vibes which i like so yeah yeah that the, too. What the, about you? unidentified falling objects uh is up my alley i'm mm. very interested in that pseudo regalia PS1, Metroidvania, Dotage is up there, Worldless, um, definitely up there, but uh, let us know in the comments below uh, what stands out to you, uh, what you think is a hidden gem from 2023 that needs more love, people screaming about Cocoon, yes, obviously. I think Cocoon's getting a lot of love. I mean, it's, it's not it for best indie, um, not to say it's not worth it, uh, but there's a lot of good stuff out there, so let us know in the comments below uh, a game that you want to get out there in front of more people, but Haley McLean, thank you for joining for this episode of Party Chat. Yeah, thanks. That is now I feel like I need to play uh, 50 more games. <laughs> yep, get <laughs> on it. Uh, we're going to be streaming yep. all week long here at MinMax to try and catch up for our big game of the year debate and stuff. So again, you can follow us at twitch.tv slash MinMax show. <clears throat> we're streaming Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, um, all going through and trying to go through our entire backlog. So give us a follow on Twitch. It's a great way to help support us or Thank you to everybody for unlocking Party Chat, our bonus podcast, which is what this is, that airs every single Monday. Everybody in the bonus podcast feed unlocks it. That's the $5 tier on Patreon. So thanks, everybody, for making this show happen. And thanks, everybody, at the MinMax Council tier for calling into the show. So many questions for the show. Nick, Bob, Danny, EJ, Sleepy Ben, Hazard, Fred, Prozian number 6, Pat, Leafeon, Bobby Mack, Kyle S. Thanks for being here. This was a clip from Party Chat, our Patreon-exclusive podcast that airs every single Monday. The podcast features cohorts and friends of the show, contributors, talking directly to the MinMax community. So if you're looking for even more podcasts from MinMax, this is the place to go. Just head to patreon.com slash minmax with two ends support us at the $5 tier and you can listen to Party Chat every single week. Thanks so much, everybody. We appreciate it.